Hello, today is Tuesday the 23rd of November. In this video, we're going to run through some Australian stocks, starting with GrainCorp, which has, in the last week, achieved an all-time high, just moving very, very well. The interesting thing about this is that whilst it is clearly, you know, bottom left, top right is always a good way to look at a chart, but it has certainly had extended periods of sideways movement. So if you look at this period of time through the middle of the year, you know, from 480 up to around 540, clearly a bit of resistance there at 540 or 550 thereabouts. That's a relatively narrow range, uh, only around 10% or thereabouts over the course of several months. You know, jumps higher, but again, it's only moved sideways, sitting on support here at 620, up to around 670, 680. But it has, you know, you can't deny the, certainly the overall uh, solid uptrend just continues to move high. Sure, there's a bit of a reversal in the last day, but we always get reversals and it just continues uh, to move well. Next is Independence Group or IGO. Uh, also, you know, trading at an all time high, just continues to move well. You uh, look, round numbers don't get much rounder than $10. So if I just draw a line in there right on 10 bucks or thereabouts, you can see how well it's moved up here. That's a pretty strong move over the course of what, six, eight weeks from $7, nearly um, you know, 50% gain up to $10, runs into a wall of support, falls away, has another go, has another go, and continues to uh, badger that $10 level. But resistance, you know, stands firm. It's a nice round number, a glut of supply. You can imagine just running into that glut of supply. So many people wanting to sell that it's just insufficient demand to push through. But it has, you know, a little poked its head up here, but a nice little reversal pattern, force it back a pin bar but has in the last few days just made a really solid push higher and broken through. So it'll be interesting now if it just sort of reverses, finds a bit of support at that level and then continues to move higher off that uh, support level. Next is Steadfast Group, also moving well, trading at an all-time high. But of all of these, these is, this is probably the stock that it just has the least amount of volatility, just doesn't move that much, albeit it has moved very, very well uh, over the last what year or so and just continues to move high probably a bit of resistance here at five dollars nice round number even 510 as well for the last few days and it's just finally uh, broken through that we've spoken about macquarie several times uh, little to fault with this you know looking back here at this resistance and then just continues to move higher just continues to move well and as much as people might say right now we've missed the boat you know it's already moved too far well people have been saying that for the last uh, two years or so, and they've been wrong on a regular basis. So interesting for us if we just time it perfectly, and it has in fact moved too far, but it just continues to move very, very well. Uh, not moving so well is ANZ, uh, the bank, and that is we've identified, well, I have identified sort of some key levels over the last six months. Certainly a lot of resistance here at 29.50, a bit of support here at 26.50 or 27, and it just so happens to be trading right at that sort of lower uh, limit of that band, that range. Um, look at the fall we've had over the last few days, and it just so happens to be right at that low point that it's been for the last, what's uh, seven or eight months or so. So does it do what it's done three times previously? Find some support in here, just reverse and get back up to the top of that range. It's done it again, struggled a little bit here. Maybe that's the, t maybe that's the signal right here that it just hasn't had that oomph and that demand to get it back all the way up to that 29.50 level, and now it's been sold off quite strongly. Does it now continue to move below that $27 level and begin a new range uh, and eating up all this sort of previous territory here and continuing to move lower? A stock uh, not struggling is ARB, and again, just trading at highs, just continues to move well. The only thing with this is just identifying this previous point here at $54 and just sort of struggling uh, to get through and falling off strongly, just getting back up towards that level now and meeting some resistance there. Yeah, so that might cause an issue going forward in the very near future. Never really know how to pronounce this, Horizon. Horizon. Again, I've looked at this previously. It's had quite the fall. There's sort of pandemic announcement fall. It just didn't get back up to previous highs like a lot of stocks did. This just really struggled to do that. And since then, uh, has found a bit of support here at 340 maybe at 345 here, that sort of previous uh, low point here, gets back down to 345, 340, maybe 335. 
but you can just see it's really now clinging on to that 340 level almost at the end of its fingertips just trying to hold on and to see whether it can you know enjoy another light another bounce back up here or whether in fact it does make a clear distinct break to the low side and then meet resistance at 340 uh, which then would really you know uh, really make it very difficult to regain all that lost ground as it continues to move lower so certainly just uh, looking a bit uh, a bit of a concern there for that particular stock uh, BHP um, you know just trading at lows uh, very volatile stock uh, a lot of movement through here but right now if I was to draw a line here I'd probably run put one right at $36 that's a little bit off but you can see you know the bouncing off support coming down and just again fingertips just holding on and any bounce off that level is just struggling to get back up and regain that lost ground so it's really just clinging on there trying to enjoy every bit of support and demand that it can to stay above that level um, and not fall into lot lower levels. Uh, Bank of Queensland, BOQ. We've looked at this previously. I had identified that level at 850. Not precise, you know, these levels here didn't quite get down to 850, but certainly more recently, very, very strong fall and a good bounce off that 850 level. You know, a nice round numbers. I tend to gravitate there myself when I look for these key levels. Just rolling over, gets back to that level, but then just continues and has fallen, what, another 50 cents um, in the last week or so. So that just, just doesn't look good. And again, if you can see what it's done, you know, just even just 12 months ago, moving up well from around, what, 560, 580, 550-ish. And the fact that it's here, does it have that potential to fall all the way back down there? Well, absolutely, the potential is there. Whether it does that, we don't know. The other thing with $8, if we to draw a line through $8 as well. Thereabouts, you can see back here that, again, just a round number. It's easy for people to think in terms of those round numbers. Met a lot of resistance here at $8 over the course of more than a month. So that's significant. Breaks through, finds a bit of support there. Did break through there a little bit, but it's back at that nice round number of $8. So does it continue to decline? Does it get a bit of a rally and but get back up to $8.50 and then struggle and then continue uh, to fall lower? On the other end of the scale, a stock moving very, very well is computer share. Uh, again, I've identified this level back through here at 1820. A lot of resistance there over the course of, you know, one, two, three, four weeks. Just couldn't get through, broke through. Didn't really come back and retest that level and find some support, but it's just continued to move a little bit higher uh, since then. CSL, one of the best companies you'll ever find. Um, I've drawn in this level at around $310 just because back through history, you know, if I just come back more recently, just a few months ago, getting up to this level and really struggling, getting to this level again and got through a little bit but fell away and it's just trying to get through this level here. The concern for this is the, is this higher prices up here and the fact that there's a lot of people who have bought stock up here and over here as well, so above that black line and they're still holding on. Some of them are thinking, of, it's been a really disappointing time to own stock in this company over the last 18 months. Um, the price has been lower than what I purchased. If it ever gets back up to what I paid for it, I'm going to get out. And a lot of people do think that. And if enough people think that, we get you know additional supply uh, of stock, which makes it even more difficult for that stock to you know, move high. And that's where resistance comes about, or certainly a part of resistance. So yes, it's trading at a pretty reasonable level right now and you know certainly at its highest point in the, you know this year in 12 months. Uh, but it's just got a few other levels that it needs to contend with. And if these levels were five years ago, it would be less relevant, but they're not. Uh, they're only in the last two years or so. And finally, Monodelphus Group, just the opposite end, just really struggling here. I've identified this level here right at $9. Again, just a multiple of a dollar, nice round number where it's bounced off here very, very strongly, come down recently, a month or so ago, finding support there and bouncing off, just so happens to be getting back down to that level now. You know, is that a trigger for short trades? And if it does break through, you know, does it rally back up again, but just fail to get to these previous highs? Or does it in fact break through there, find some resistance at $9 and begin a new range below $9 as it continues to move lower? Well, that's it for today, Tuesday, the 23rd of November. Hope that's been of some use. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you.